Greetings everybody, it's Jim and I have a special treat for you today because it is after all Columbia Games' block party uh, featuring one of the top 50 war games of all time according to the fans over at Board Game Geek and that is of course Julius Caesar. And what is the treat you may ask? It is none other than both of the designers of Julius Caesar. Today I'm going to be going over an interview with you with Grant Dogleash and Justin Thompson, the authors of Julius Caesar. Sure, sure. Good question. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we we talked about it. We yeah, all right. So we talked about it. Actually, I made a trip out to to Washington, and we sat down and actually really started getting delving into it. Uh, the the interesting part of this is is if you if you play Caesar, you know that Caesar basically is Mark Antony versus. I mean, Mark Antony is is in the war, but. He's with Caesar, so it's Caesar versus Pompey, and we stopped the war right there um, with those two. There is a second part to the war. Most of you all know that Octavian and, and Mark Antony had their thing, but it's over 11 years of time. Um, it's not a two- or three-year battle. It's, I mean, it's just a lot of political stuff. It's small skirmishes, little battles, but most people do not know the history of the time with Mark Antony. Mark Antony was down in the East um, with Cleopatra, and while he was having his romantic interlude, he basically lost almost all of Asia Minor, and he lost Antioch and Jerusalem to the Persians, I mean, the Parthians. And so there was a big uh, brouhaha in Rome, but he was letting, losing the empire. So he sent a general up to take everything back and took most of Asia Minor back and Antioch before Mark Antony realized that he was losing all the glory. So he stayed in Egypt the entire time. Well, eventually he had to react. So he went up to where his general was in Antioch uh, and sent him home. So if you want to go look this up, you realize he got the general who's, you do not know his name. I don't even remember it myself right now. Um, he went back and Antioch actually had a triumph in Rome. And then you never hear another word out of him ever again. So Mark Antony kind of silenced him, gave him his due and let him go and then took over. Now at that point, he decided he was going to go down and take out Persia altogether. So he put a hundred thousand men together to go and attack the Persians. So the second half of the war, we decided, um, we tried to do the entire Med, but it's so convoluted because of the fact that, no, there was, a, they had Lepidus over in Africa, you had Sextus in Sicily, you had Octavian in, in Rome, you have Mark Antony in, in, in Egypt, the Parthians over there, the, the Persians over so much it's so hard to throw all that in to make it viable that one side versus another so we decided uh at least we are our current thinking remember guys this is all concept at this point we do have a board and we have rules and we have this that and the other we blocks the whole deal but it's still a working process and it takes quite a while to get something like this done so this is not intimate i mean it's not intimate imminent at this point so I will say that it basically the battle, the, the game is about Mark Antony versus the Persians. So he is going to try to do, take out the Persians, and it is not easy. They control the terrain. They, they have inbred, I mean, inbred, <laughs> ingrown natural allies with these king, client kings. That's, and the kings are going to switch back and forth. Um, there's a lot of treachery. Um, moving across large deserts and spaces and things is, is very difficult to do. So we're still in the process. And it is, I mean, we've been, you know, it, it just hasn't been the right timing yet. And when we, the timing hits, we'll finish it up and it'll happen. But yeah, it, go it, ahead. It's Grant. a matter of time and, and energy and uh, things, curveballs sometimes, COVID being the latest one, just, just get in the way. Oh, that's easy. Rome and Rhodes just go together. Rome is, all roads lead to Rome, one of the most famous expressions there is. And uh, Ro Romans were famous for building roads. It had to have roads. It just had to. But also, 
if if we're remembering that one of the inspirations was the War of 1812 game, that's a point-to-point road movement game. And uh, so it, it, it evolved rather naturally. As those of you who've studied it or thought about it a lot, the roads, hexes, and areas are actually all similar mechanically, but they have important differences. And um, it's, a, it's a design decision to capture the flavor of what we're trying to do, whether we go with, with uh, which one, areas, roads, or hexes. Uh, but Rome had to be roads, right? It just had to be. So, but no, the, I, I, actually, I think the road part of it, actually, the dynamics of the roads and being have to be sitting next to a city to attack it oh. and do this kind of stuff has really made the big difference yeah. in the game. And, you know, we, we have the Mercury car that allows you to move three cities. That's all road movement. Um, it's kind of amazing how that all had, had turned out. But, you know, it's also the roads also determine how you can retreat, how you can uh, regroup the whole deal. Uh, I will tell you that when we started it, and I, and I personally have a personal opinion, um, hexes are a little more complicated because uh, like the uh, some games I've played in the past, you would be on one in one hex, and to get out of that hex, you'd have obviously different directions you could go. And some rules in some games, there's there was you know trees on one side, a river on one side, uh, a mountain on one side, or, or or some other. You'd have four or five different ways to go out of that hex at different rules. So it's much more complicated than moving four down. Four guys, or two guys. That's so, it. Yeah. Yeah, so it just was kind of, you know, roads was natural. Plus, you know, like like you just said, the Romans were famous for building roads. Matter of fact, I read a story, I think Julius Caesar was in his uh, autobiography about roads that he would have send his legions out to build oh, yeah. roads as they were yeah. marching so that they would have a road to go yeah. back down. You build so, it right to the enemy. I think it was more to keep them busy. I was probably more to keep them busy because, you know, they weren't always fighting, yeah. right? I think it was more to keep them busy. Remember, you, most people, uh, if you read the histories, especially, you should go out and read Julius Caesar's books because they're really, yeah. really good. Um, but they talks about, you know, they were builders. I mean, think about the big battles up in and in, 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 um, uh, when he was up in in France, where he had to build that big giant thing around That's the city, it, yeah. where he built. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they were big into building stuff, so yeah. the roads was a yeah. natural thing. So, you build a road yeah, right, right a to good... the enemy, and, and it, you get you've got supply lines, and it's it. Rome, Rome fighting Romans is it's it's a fair fight, uh, but when when Rome was fighting anybody else uh, in in the Gauls or or uh, other other peoples. Uh, I think that the, the the construction, the earthworks, the road building, that's actually the, the, what made the difference. Because uh, Romans were some quite often outnumbered, but could still uh, get around. People. It's like building that road, it's building that bridge across yeah. that river. Yeah, oh, I remember that story. Uh, when they was trying to talk to the Germans, remember there was 400,000 yeah. of them up there? There was a history of that where Caesar turned back 400,000 people who were trying to come in actually slaughter most of them, to be honest with you. Most people don't realize how vicious Caesar was, but Caesar was not a really good guy. I mean, he was a great general, but he was a very vicious man. So, yeah. And, and that's, uh, he built the bridge yes. just to show that he could, that if, if, if they messed with him, he would be there. And then he burnt it just to show that he could. And that's I, right. I love that. I love that. He's a bad dude. It's good bad stuff. dude. Well, what it does is it it makes it um, accessible uh, and playable um, again and again and again. And it's it's the replay of a game that really sets it in that list. If you look at that top one hundred list with any kind of a critical eye, you'll see that it's not what's new and flashy that's on the list they got some even some design controls that kind of prevent that why in the in the in the rating system when you put out a new game you you've got to struggle to overcome a built-in average bias uh which is designed so that not every new game that shows up doesn't just leap to the top of the list the the order of that 
um, ranking reflects longevity and play frequency. Um, so simpler game has a better chance, in my estimation, of getting played more often. Um, and certainly it, it also helps that you come away quite often with a real epic feeling from playing the game. And like, all you want to do is play again. Uh, it's <laughs> like, okay, rematch, right now. It's a go-to game for uh, anyone Ask me what's the best block game to, to try first or, or to uh, teach someone, including someone who's never wargamed before. I would absolutely recommend Caesar. And there's, there's a few reasons, aside from some of the stuff we've been talking about today, uh, something that comes to my mind is that, uh, Justin, Justin, you did mention it, that you, you don't have to look at the rule book. You, 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 you have to look at it at the beginning, of course, to learn the game. But after you get going on the game, there's no charts to reference, there's no tables, and there's no exceptions, hardly of any significant amount. So the uh, when a player is taught the game, they it, it, it really helps that they learn it, and then the, the, usually the other person helping them learn, you know, um, when they're able to say, it, it, this is how it works, and this is how it always works. There are, there are no exceptions. It's not it's not difficult, and once you get past the basics of it, um, it, it, it stays that way. It stays consistently. Uh, you know, uh, predictable, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and that's on purpose. Uh, the evolution from uh, from 1812 to um, some of the other games, including Caesar, is, uh, it's not like a straightforward linear evolution, uh, but uh, you can certainly see it. You can like the, things like fog of war and step reduction are constant throughout all the games, and some of the basic mechanics uh, stay true throughout all of them. And and even when they're not the same, they're sort they're very often um, synonymous or, or congruent is another word. Where a road limit is a road limit in a road game, but it's a border limit in a border game and an area game, or a hex side limit in a hex game. But once you know that, it doesn't matter. You sit down and play a Columbia Hex game and someone tells you Hexide Limit, you know what that means because you play Julius Caesar. You know what a road limit is. You know what a Hexide Limit is. And it doesn't surprise you, really. So that, that's another, another point. It, 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 uh, it is a system. And because it works so well, um, the evolution that uh, it is more sideways than, than whole wholesale, right? It's, it's, it just keeps working. So we, we just keep adjusting it, adding subtleties and, and, um, and changes that, to, that we need to reflect the period. But still, to, so when you get the game, you open the box. If you've been at all familiarized with Columbia games, you almost know how to play just, just looking through the pieces, just kind of looking at the map. You, you, you know how to play and I, I would say that uh let me throw, interject something here for you most people we haven't even spoken about these so i'm gonna bring this up real fast um one of the interesting things that people comment about to me is is the cards themselves so we have um what we call god cards uh, event cards that are in the game and uh, I have more comments about that we were talking about what people read and, and what they continually think about probably the most um, the most talked about subject and things is how to use the cards properly oh, yeah. and the event cards are you know you know can we do this can we do that everybody's trying to use the cards to make up their own advantage change the way they play how they do it just like in our game the other day when it came down to that last card play or the, the, the cards, it was the God cards that made the difference. Now, I'm referencing God cards because um, when we were putting the game together, Tom said we need to put some God into this because Caesar was a high priest. And, uh, and so yeah. we need to think about he didn't do any movement without having the gods mm -hmm. involved in it. Uh, and if you, if you ever, and I didn't, we didn't bring this up early, so I'll bring this up now. Uh, my 
the reason I got, I, I got into this game was when HBO brought out the TV series Rome. Oh, yeah. Um, it was the leading factor for me saying, oh, my God, look at this. They're showing how these people are moving around or these battles, and they're showing this beautiful map, and they're showing this, that, and the other. So I, uh, I thought that would be a tremendous way of doing playing a tremendous game. That's where that all came out of. But the God cards referenced inside that TV series, it's only 22 episodes long, but the bottom line is, is the God are, gods are referenced oh, right. in every oh, episode. This- yes. So when we came up with the God card, Tom said it had to be in there, and I, we perfectly agree. Now, I know it's a, that's probably the most talked about subject of things that people would like to change in a, a newer version is the God cards versus non-God cards. But fifth. the bottom line is, is you know, it, it's hard just to be able to say, look, here's my Vulcan card where I can now have a volcano erupt right where Caesar's at right now, Right. Those things are, are, yes, are impractical and not necessarily logical, but you know what? It happened. And the bottom line is, is it we could make that a thousand different things, but the actual what happens by losing the step uh, is more fun to think that I had the power of the, of the hand of the God to be able to make that decision. Yeah. So, Yeah, it was, even people have uh, dreamt up... Um, alternatives there's stuff posted on the board game geek with cards the same cards with different names um and that's okay but uh, to us the flavor uh, uh, was necessary and and um they had to be there and i'm glad that they they turned out the way they did it's interesting a lot of people also perceive that the god cards are excessively powerful um and and after you play for a while you come to realize that they really they really aren't. They 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 have counters, and the fact that you can cancel a god card with another god card, and it's 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 quite interesting how good players learn how to do that, learn how to anticipate what the other guy's doing, and and then in the game you and I played this one, you guys can watch in a minute or two here. It I had two god cards in the second year of play, I think, and so did you, and that's not that common, but you knew that I was going to cancel your first one. You you just, you could assume that, I think, but you didn't think I would be able to cancel your second one. And yeah. 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 <laughs> but then those card cards, That's true. powerful as they are, they, they don't involve much movement. If there is any movement, it's one group only. You never get to levy. The card can be canceled. And... Um, with with those limitations, they're nowhere near as powerful as they appear. Also, it's really easy to use them wrong. One of the most uh, common, quote-unquote, rookie mistakes is to use a Mars card, which gives you the first fire in battle, to make a big attack. And, you know, thinking, well, now I'm, I'm going to shoot first, I'm going to get the jump on him, and I'm going to win. And you use that maybe in an even attack. It's generally not my recommendation. I, I like to use a Mars card when the agenda is to uh, uh, eliminate what's there. It's al- already a weaker force, but you want to kill it before it gets away in round two. That's what a Mars card is well used for. A lot of you know rookie players use it to have a big battle, and it backfires 50% of the time if you do that. You don't roll well enough in the first round, then the defender rolls all his guys in the second half of the first round, and then round two is back to normal, so the defender effectively shooting twice in a row. It's um, It can go wrong so fast. Uh, another thing that can go wrong with the Mars card happens uh, to, to, un, um, to the beginning players against the Shark. You make your move, and you forget or you just decide you don't need to leave a guy behind from the place you came from the god cards by definition always go first so the other player plays a normal two card three card whatever and he moves right behind where you came from in the mars and um then maybe reinforces the place the battle survives the battle and you the mars guy have to retreat and you find you can't because you got to retreat right where you came from and the enemy has slipped in there as player two. 
And that doesn't only happen with Mars cards. That happens with all kinds of battles. But it's the dynamism of the player one, player two uh, concept. We like to hash that out all the time. Being player one is great sometimes. Being player two is great sometimes. Right? You, ability to react is, is, is handy. The ability to go first and pin people or tie up or keep the initiative is handy at other times. All of that makes... Uh, makes an intense experience and that the card play really matters. I think even if all other things were equal, like if you played a game with some kind of automatic and everything happened the same, moving the soldiers the same and, and, and rolling the dice the same, but if you played the cards in different order, it'd be a different game. Yeah, so you remember how it went down, right? You and me collaborated early on with your... Um, your you know, formal submission of the, um, the Rome versus Rome was the name of the working title, and uh, we worked on it together. I helped uh, punch up the graphics from from um, your concept. I remember um, this would have been before the the final thing back in uh, you know two thousand nine probably. Um, right, it was it was awesome. Yeah, it was. I would say that um, I remember uh, getting out there. It was like you came and picked me up in Seattle and took me up to the house. House, and I remember getting there. It was like ten o'clock at night. We were just so excited about starting to play, but I was so dead. Sure. I remember I was my brain couldn't work, and then, so I took a twenty-minute power nap, and I came back and I was refreshed. I simply stayed up till two or three o'clock in the morning playing and having fun and doing whatever, getting it together. Um, I, I, your father's a genius. Um, he he has all the skills of, of a master craftsman. I mean, there's just no question. He is the leader when it comes to to knowing what's the best strategies in games. Um, we you know we talked for hours. He, he's he's endless with ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's nobody better. So he really helped us put this all together. So as much as my name and your names on this game. We know Tom's in there too. We know. No question. Yeah. He, he, yeah. I remember when he decided to give a, a you and me a quote unquote full billing uh, that we knew we knew, but we were very honored. Uh, and uh, it's a team. It's a team effort. I mean, you know, uh, no, nothing that happens in in uh, this in our in the company has been a solo effort because you can't do it by yourself. But certainly, we were like. You know, we just want to make this game really easy for people to get into, enjoy the rules, not have to go through 25 pages of rules to be a game um, what it is now. And there's, I think you and I sat down and decided between the two of us that we weren't going to release the game until the rules were, were as clean and as crisp as we could get it so there would be... If you wanted to play the game as the game sat with the rules, the rules would be good enough to play without having to make any adjustments. Oh, well, we so I remember, I remember sitting, I remember sitting down with the the rules as you were putting your first games together. I remember this vividly because we were reading the rules, and there was a one single word change yeah. that we had one to word. make. One. It had an and. It had to have an and to put in. So we put an and in, and that's how you got 1.01 instead of 1.00. Right. And I don't know. There might be some rule. Did, nope. we, did we actually send out the games with that with the rules that had oh, one yeah. point? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The collectors. So somebody who, has, somebody who has the rule set with 1.00, and it actually has, I would say, uh, a very rare game. Yeah, and a lot of people with that set uh, of rules tend to throw out the old rules if they get new ones. But in that case, yeah, nothing, nothing significant changed. It barely deserved a, a numbering, uh, like a 1.01 kind of number. And so Justin and I, we played, right? This was an epic game. And you guys can go watch it. Um, we recorded both of us talking, so it played my screen as I was playing, and Justin um, and I together on audio. So we're, we're kibitzing a little bit as we play. And in that game, it seesawed. One of the things I can tell all the people who are watching, um, never give up. Because, yeah. you know, I, I, we got towards the end of this game, and, and I, was, I was sure I had lost. Yeah. And the reason I was so sure I had lost was my cards I had in my hand. It wasn't necessarily the table. There was I had very little blocks left on the board. We had beat each other up so badly. There, we had so many blocks. 
I mean, and I had thought I had won earlier. I mean, I when Cecil went down, I, I shouldn't be telling you this, but when, but long story short is, is that it came down to, we shouldn't tell them the, the, the reason why, should we? Yeah, oh yeah, the, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Are we going to, are we going to tell them? We're going to tell them. All right, so it came down to card play, and, and the bottom line was, is I had the right card at the right time, but I didn't even realize I had it. I didn't realize I had the right card until all of a sudden Grant made his move. And uh, when Grant made his move, he, he was sure that was going to lock down the victory. And so was I. I mean, I was like, oh, my gosh, let's go ahead and give it up right here. I was ready to give it up with four cards to go because I didn't think I had a chance. He, yeah, I talked you into staying because we always we always like to play to the bitter end. And that proves the point. It flipped back and forth. You know, it's at least two or three times who was going to win there. Yes. The, 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 I had the story there where Caesar was on the run pr from, from, I think, the second year of the game, uh, all through the second, maybe even the third year. And, and one of the tough choices I faced was it came to winter. And Caesar had danced around in, in uh, Asia Minor, surviving by the skin of his skinny skin, right? And um, came to the winter, and I, I had the option to disband which you can do in winter. Um, and, you know, you have to disband if you're overstacked, um, but you you can also electively disband. And most of the time you don't do that except with a leader or maybe a ballista if you felt like you needed to get that somewhere else, right? So I remember this. I, I clicked the disband, and, and and Justin, you were telling me, you know what you're going to do, son. You're going you're gonna to disband that guy. Send him back to Rome. And, and I clicked it, and then... For dramatic pause, I, I clicked undo, because that's cool. R uh, Rally the Troops has a, a great undo function. Love that. Love that. And so, but I brought, I, I didn't, I didn't disband him at the bottom bottom line. And, and I kept running around for the next year, I think was the third year of play. Um, and it was still epic, right? That whole year I got down, I remember fighting my way down. I didn't know if I was, I didn't think I was going to take you out. You kept building yourself back up with people. And I, I just couldn't, the, the thing was, is, 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 is folks when you, most people that do not take the option of, of disbanding leaders yeah. or blocks you have that option at the winter to disband blocks but people just don't do it because you lose the steps yeah so you have to restart back at one caesar was at three he was a caesar was time fully buffed. A different so that was i think that was your deciding factor was he's fully buffed but when you when you guys see this on the screen it, it, it was definitely a very risky perhaps a suicidal move for Caesar to stay. There was uh, six or seven uh, Pompey blocks nearby, but somehow the, the third year of the game, uh, I, I battled. I fought through. I remember Ankara in in Asia Minor and recruited that that really good legion there. Fought my way down to Tarsus on the coast. You and attacked. You attacked everywhere. You got a four card. I remember it was a four card. You attacked everywhere. Yeah. Well, it was, and you won every battle. It was. It was desperation <laughs> time because I could see I was uh, was wasn't contending. Twenty twenty two represents the fiftieth anniversary of Columbia Games. Like fifty years, my dad got got started. Nineteen seventy two. That's just. A mind bender, uh, fifty years doing this, and uh, his first game way back then was Quebec seventy fifty nine, right? I mean, of course, you, you know you know that Justin, and everybody uh, needs to know that Quebec is is the first the original Columbia game, first block game, and this year we're 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 gonna re revamp it and publish a fiftieth anniversary edition, but but uh, not right. Not a year after uh, the uh, the Quebec game, my dad Tom put out a second game, which was the War of eighteen twelve. Uh, and and for those of you that you know, that's still for sale. That's still available. The War of eighteen twelve is is the Great Lakes part of the of the the war, uh, and it is it's a beautiful segue into what we're talking about today because the. Design, Justin, the design co-designer with me, and the, the really the brainchild behind uh, Julius Caesar, uh, developed the game with was coming from the War of eighteen twelve as a favorite. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah, that was. I was just gonna say that that was the. Uh, it, I fell in love with eighteen twelve, War of eighteen twelve. It's one of my favorite all-time games. It's one of the best 
flowing games that I've ever played. It's, you can play either side, and you have a very excellent chance of winning the game. It's a very fun game. If you have never played it. It's worth every minute of your time. Okay, so let, let me make sure before we sign off that I say thank you, everybody, also myself, uh, for, uh, for playing the game, tuning in today. Remember, this is Julius Caesar week. Uh, it's a block party. Play the game. Um, we all need an excuse to play the game, so here's one. Play the game. Uh, uh, we're telling you to do it this week just, just as a thing to focus on. And if you uh, are motivated to take a picture of yourself playing the game, um, with a buddy, um, and you're willing to post that on a, on a forum somewhere, social, a, a Facebook, or whatever, send us a link. We'll add 10 game dollars uh, to your uh, account on ColumbiaGames.com as a thanks for that. Uh, but but more important, play the game. Have fun. It's um, it's a good time to play. It's, it's winter, staying indoors. It's a great time to play Caesar. Uh, thanks again for everything, Jim, for facilitating. Justin from Vegas, thanks for being here. Uh, throughout this week, there will be some other um, opportunities to um, to live stream. We haven't quite figured out what we're going to do yet, date by date. We got a bit of a plan, but um, it's it's fluid. So um, we're looking forward to making this week go, and I think it's going to be we're very excited to hear about other people playing. And uh, and some of the epic stories that after action reports from other games, those are fun. We love reading them. So make them, post them, send them. And thanks, thanks again for tuning in, and everything, and playing the games and having fun. Thanks everything. Thanks for everything, folks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.